Hi, I'm Dana Prieto, running for Senate District 34. We may have been at your door, or we, you may have heard, had a co phone call from us, and uh, we may have given you this card where you can download a free book. I wrote a book years ago that a CEO strategist wrote the uh, uh, forward in the book, and he used that book to train CEOs all over the country. And one of the principles in the book was, if you're leading people, you have to be somebody to lead. And so in that vein, you know, like Jesus was a leader extraordinaire. All he had to do was walk up to people and say, hey, follow me. They dropped everything they were doing and followed him. Well, I could tell you what I think about uh, critical race theory, but I'm with Dr. Howard Hatcher here, who's been black in America a lot longer than I have been. And so I think it would be better to hear from Dr. Hatcher, plus he happens to be an expert on it. <laughs> Well, hello, thank you. Thank you for having me, Dana. Dana, thank you for the opportunity to just share. And um, I just am very proud that you're standing up for uh, patriotic values, constitutional values, and you appreciate um, what a constitutional republic means to our nation. Because the last great frontier that we've got to preserve is the very fabric of a constitutional republic. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but regarding CRT, there's so many misunderstandings about it. Um, and to really cut to the chase and get to the bottom line, uh, CRT has roots in Marxist underpinnings. And it goes back to uh, Engels, it goes back to, back to Karl Marx, it goes back uh, to some early uh, early 19th century idealists who look for social reform. Um, and I think uh, fast forward into the modern 21st century paradigm, the modern 21st century um, ideological framework that's used to shape the understanding of our children who will be the leaders for the next uh, the next uh, century of what our nation is going to be, if it exists at all, uh, you have to look at the perspectives being shaped today, especially in K through 12. So uh, it's safe to say that CRT, if you get down to the very basics of what it means, it's a socialist revolution, it's a legal revolution, it's a constitutional revolution, and it seeks to redefine basic biological principles in terms of what we understand as uh, being a male, female, X, Y chromosome. It seeks to identify uh, means whereby legal interpretation of commonly held values are not only challenged but overturned. So this is beyond just a, a theory. It's moved from theory into legal definitions. It's moved from theory into um, divisive practices that, and these are from the founders, mm -hmm. divisive practices that states uh, white America based on uh, white supremacy is pre predominantly white males is, is irredeemably racist and beyond uh, any ability to uh, be uh, reconciled mm -hmm. with, with what they call morality. Right. And so the moment you tell an entire group of white males uh, that because of the colonial founding of this nation and how it was founded and who founded white males, suffrage movement, prejudice against women, uh, the ch chattel slavery, uh, Jim Crow laws go all the way back to how many blacks were brought over mm -hmm. uh, on a, a white supremacy system that oppressed blacks, minorities, Asian, uh, Indians, and because of the roots mm -hmm. CRT espouses that our nation is irredeemably, irrevocably racist and therefore must at its very root system of government, law, interpretation of law, be transformed into this socialist ideal of, of, of uh, animal farm mm -hmm. that goes all the way back to uh, Marxist underpinning. So uh, in my personal opinion, uh, we saw so many great advancements mm -hmm. 
uh, in the United States. We overturned the, 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 the slavery system. We overturned uh, the, uh, the suffrage uh, uh, prejudices against women and, and many of the rights that uh, people didn't have, they have today. We've had a black president uh, mm -hmm. uh, and a, a black vice president, female and black. That's what I was going to, my next question for you was going to be, do you believe there is systemic racism in America now? Well, there, there's racism everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's racism everywhere. You're always going to find someone who ha holds positions that are fundamentally racist in their purview. So you're never going to get away from uh, racism in any culture where there's a differences or there's a divide and I think what we're calling racism today is actually classism where mm -hmm. we're called many things that we're calling racism are actually classism so there is racism but it's not the uh, racism that <clears throat> is I mean look at uh, Thurgood Marshall you look at um, uh, uh, Condoleezza Rice and Powell and you look mm -hmm. at so many and this is what people aren't being honest about mm -hmm. they they are they're not being honest we've got so many congressmen uh, and senators and uh, representatives from the contiguous United States that are African American Indian um, uh, of Middle Eastern descent all mm -hmm. occupying positions mm -hmm. yeah. of power and authority and coming from some of the highest institutions, mm -hmm. right? So if we are every bit as racist, lacking the fundamental opportunity for success and the opportunity to climb the ladder as some espouse mm -hmm. through CRT, then how could this even be possible? Right. How could a black president even be possible? How could black uh, 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 Supreme Court justices <laughs> even be possible? Mm -hmm. And so the very ones who have succeeded where they say it's impossible are the very ones that are using that mantra as a political weapon. And, and I don't think that's okay, I call that, that's another form of ideological slavery. Mm -hmm. Ideological slavery yeah. that's used to aggrandize and empower yourself as the protector of the people to get them rights, that you're the very epitome mm -hmm. that that right and capability and potential exists. So instead of you becoming the icon of what's possible through hard work, through uh, 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 paying the price to get where you've got, instead we see people uh, creating ideological slaves and they're using emotional slavery, hmm. which means I'm going to tap into your emotions, I'm going to find some high profile case to, to rubber stamp that all of America is uh, racist. All of America is because of high profile cases where there have been variances. And so there are variances in many areas of inequity that we need to fight, we need to address collectively, but it cannot be a collective bargaining chip that defunds police, disenfranchises uh, white, black, Hispanic, Asian from a democratic process. And, and the way you do that, the way that you uh, uh, en engender people to your cause, engender people to your cause, is you create an emotional slave first. Mm -hmm. Find some point in your history that's a pain point. Like my mother wasn't allowed to go through um, the front door of restaurants. It, they have black fountains, white fountains, segregation, Jim Crow. My mom has a bitter pain point in her. And so what many are doing today is they're finding emotional pain points from the past, mm -hmm. pulling out of the past into the present. Mm -hmm. And the moment you engender someone I to uh, the affinity and your emotions get attached, because now you've created a, the deliverer and the savior complex, you become their savior. Mm -hmm. And that's how you create an emotional slave. And then that's the next step is to create an ideolog ideological slave. And, and they do that when, they're, uh, when women are abducted. And, and this all has to do with CRT, how it's being used mm -hmm. and how white shaming and white people ought to bow down and they mm -hmm. ought to do this. And uh, so if you take a, a female or even young men that have been abducted in trafficking, uh, they take them against their will, but then they parse out food to them. 
And then all of a sudden you become a savior because you are giving them uh, food. Interesting. So now you've used, and, and now, the, and then you can find, they begin to exploit some point where, you know, they had a bad relationship with their mom. They've mm -hmm. created a savior. So emotional slavery became, becomes the doorway to psychological slavery. And, and once you achieve that, people will ignore logic. Hmm. And that's what's happening today. They can't see the apparent success that actually is uh, uh, pro proven mm -hmm. by, by many standard measures. So I, I just think CRT, critical race theory, the way it's being used, eight different uh, levels of white identity. Mm -hmm. Eight different levels of a white <laughs> identity, and all of them are condemned. So when you, when you go back to the roots, Ibram Kendi, you go back to, uh, you know, Donna Brazile espoused it. You've got the president, uh, Joe Biden, espoused, uh, make it, trying to make it mandatory across mm -hmm. the board. And I think uh, independent states ought to be in charge of that, not the federal government. Yes, I totally agree with you. So let me ask you this, Dr. Hatcher. Where, I know that you have a lot of material on critical race theory. Uh, where can people go to find that? Uh, people can go to our website. We've got colorfreeamerica.com. Uh, you can look for us there. You can go to, and, and we have an, uh, and you can contact us directly through our, our website, colorfreeamerica.com. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, and congratulations. Yeah. <laughs>